uh, you know, it's a huge challenge to stand up on a podium and speak uh, after Giorgio. Uh, but I'm grateful for life's little mercies. I'm glad I'm coming before Tomiko and Amatia. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, life will be impossible. So, you know, and the question is, how can I make a contribution in five minutes, I promise you? So I thought the, the best thing I could try to do is to try to explain uh, why I think this book, uh, with a very interesting title, as George says, Bonsai, Banyan, and the Tao, and what is, it, what is its significance uh, to the larger history uh, of Singapore? And in my view, the great limitation of Singapore is that even though we've had 50 exceptional years of you know, remarkable success, we actually don't have a good history book, a good narrative that explains how and why Singapore succeeded. And that's why quite, quite often all the portrayals of Singapore tend to be one-dimensional. They tend to focus on the material side, look at the beautiful buildings, look at the uh, Changi Airport, look at the port, and so on and so forth. But they forget that actually Singapore, like all societies, in a sense has a hard side and a soft side. And that soft side is never really properly brought out in the descriptions uh, uh, of Singapore. And this is why I think, frankly, uh, what we need now is a good, in a sense, theory of Singapore's history. So in three minutes, I'm going to give you a new theory of Singapore's history. <laughs> and you, you will, you know, unless I give it a good title, you'll forget it. So, you know, if I say a collection of four, a group of four, you'll forget it. So please remember the phrase, the gang of four theory of Singapore history. <laughs> So who is this gang of four? Now, what I want to point out is that what makes Singapore's history unique is that in our leaders, uh, we had at least four leaders who were rather exceptional by any standards. And they were exceptional because they were both good politicians and policy makers, but also very good writers. And I think there's this balance of being able to do both that explains why Singapore uh, has evolved uh, in the way that it did. And, and I'm sure you can guess who this gang of four are. Uh, the first, of course, obviously, is uh, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. And it is, it is obviously not a secret that he was a great writer. I'll never forget a lunch I had with uh, uh, David Marshall in the cricket club, even 30 years ago. And even by the time when David Marshall was very critical of Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, when I asked him, who do you think is the best writer Singapore has? He said to me, Kisho, there's absolutely no question, it's Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. And so you can see that what an exceptional writer he was, and you can see in the recognition he's got. But Dr. Go King Sui also, who's, who's credited with being the architect of the Singapore's economic miracle, frankly was an equally uh, gifted writer, and I'm very glad I found uh, 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 a short phrase from uh, Janadas, which describes how uh, Dr. Goh's writing abilities. He begins by saying, of course, Dr. Goh Kingsfield has been described as the founder of Singapore's armed forces, the architect of Singapore's economy, the master builder of independent Singapore. But as Janadas says, he was also a remarkably gifted writer, indeed the most distinguished writer of English prose that this country has had. Was he so effective a public servant, in large part because he was so precise, so translucent, so gracious a writer? He was a graceful, even stylish writer, to be sure. And this is Dr. Go King Sui, the hard-headed, tough-minded economic builder of Singapore. And the third, of course, was uh, Mr. Raja Ratnam. And I'm sure you've all known about the great speeches by Raja Ratnam. He would always have a very remarkable turn of phrase. And, you know, he would, for example, at a time when the uh, PAP was having difficulties with uh, uh, J.B. Jayaratnam, who was fondly known as J.B.J., uh, Mr. Raja Ratnam came, as, came up with a speech about the dangers of J.B.J. And when everyone thought he was talking about J.B. Jaratnam, it turned out he was talking about James Bond journalism. <laughs> <laughs> so this was Rajaratnam with a very mischievous uh, turn of phrase. And what, of course, uh, make these men re what this made these three men quite remarkable is that they were practical men, 
they were men who understood uh, history and who also were very committed to Singapore. By the way, I do have a longer text which I'll put up on the website and you can read it if you want. <laughs> but the fourth man, who I think is in many ways as gifted as these three, clearly is the writer today, Mr. Giorgio. So a round of applause for George. <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely amazing how someone who was trained in engineering in Cambridge and then got a master's in business administration and then went on to spend many years in the Singapore Armed Forces turned out to be this remarkably gifted and insightful writer. And I can tell you from personal experience when I travel with him, uh, when Yugoslavia was still alive and we went to Belgrade and when a local Yugoslav guide was telling us about the history of that place, and when he finished at his description, Giorgio carried on. And I could see the jaw of the guide drop. And he said, how do you know so much? <laughs> and that's amazing. And so we are really blessed to have in Singapore at least four people who've succeeded in being good politicians, in being good policy makers, who contributed to the development of the hard side of Singapore, but equally importantly, have made an equally important contribution to the soft side of Singapore. And it also explains why, contrary to what many people say about Singapore, Singapore is not an intellectual desert. Singapore actually, especially if you look around the region, is truly, uh, I would say, an intellectual garden. And the reason why we have an intellectual garden that matches the physical garden that you see out there is precisely because we've had these four great leaders who are gifted as politicians and as writers. And for that reason, I'm really happy to see this book out in print. So thank you, George, for doing this for us.